The film begins in Miami, with detectives Mike Lowry, Will Smith, and Marcus Burnett, Martin Lawrence, racing through the streets on their way to an event. Marcus feels nauseous, so Mike lets him stop briefly to get a ginger ale. Marcus ends up buying ginger ale, Skittles, and a hot dog. A gunman then tries to rob the place, but Mike scolds Marcus for getting snacks before Marcus deflects the gunman's arm, allowing Mike to shoot him in the leg. Next, they head to Mike's wedding, where he marries his physical therapist Christine, Melanie Libbard. They are joined by Marcus's wife Teresa, Tasha Smith, daughter Megan, Bianca Bethune, son-in-law Reggie, Dennis Green, Captain Rita Secada, Paula Nunez, her boyfriend and district attorney Adam Lockwood, Yoan Griffith, and AMMO agents Kelly, Vanessa Hudgens, and Dorn, Alexander Ludwig. Also present are the late Captain Howards, Joe Pantoliano, daughter, U.S. Marshal Judy, Rhea Seahorn, and her daughter Callie, Quinn Hemphill. During the celebration, Marcus suffers a near-fatal heart attack and collapses. As his friends and family call for help, Marcus envisions himself on a beach with Howard, who tells him it's not his time yet. Marcus wakes up in the hospital weeks later with a new appreciation for life and an inflated sense of confidence. He returns home to a celebration with Mike, Christine, and his family, but is frustrated to find Teresa has thrown out all his snacks to enforce a healthy diet. Elsewhere in Miami, a former DEA officer named James McGrath, Eric Dane, meets with a cartel banker, arranging for funds to be transferred to an account in Captain Howard's name. Once the transaction is completed, McGrath's goons kill the banker's bodyguard, then force the banker's girlfriend to shoot the banker and herself. Soon, news breaks that Howard is being posthumously framed for his involvement with cartels. Mike and Marcus head to the station to confront the higher-ups who believe Howard was crooked. Judy comes in trying to get herself on the case, while also vowing to Mike that if she ever comes across Armando, Jacob Scipio, she will kill him in retribution for him killing her father. Mike and Marcus later visit Armando in prison and find out that Howard was targeted after his previous victims were eliminated due to the work he had against the cartels. He doesn't remember McGrath's name but remembers his face since he worked with Armando's mother, and so he can identify him. McGrath and his goons are attempting to continue their work, but once they try to get into Howard's accounts, they trigger a failsafe that sends video messages to Mike and Marcus from Howard. In it, he explains that he knows they are seeing this if he is dead, and he knows that he is being set up to take the fall for something going back over 20 years. Howard tells the two to follow the Coke bottle giant, meaning a former informant of theirs named Fletcher, John Sally. Mike and Marcus go to Fletcher's club to try and talk to him. He knows that they come on behalf of Howard, but just before he can tell the two what they want to know, McGrath shoots Fletcher in the head as Marcus already had his gun aimed at him to make him talk. McGrath walks away as his gunmen go after Mike and Marcus. In the middle of the shootout, Mike experiences a panic attack. The gunmen get away before Rita and her officers show up. Mike prevents Marcus from letting her know that they are going off a tip from Howard. The guys then take surveillance pics and footage to Kelly and Dorn, who help get a scan code unlocked, containing another message from Howard. He explains in further detail that he was working a cartel case and kept Mike and Marcus off of it because two other detectives, Ruiz and Sanchez from the first movie, were put on it and they got killed. Howard warns the guys that the cartel have people working with the police and FBI. In prison, Armando is attacked by thugs on the inside sent by McGrath. Mike makes an argument to have Armando transported in a chopper. Unfortunately, McGrath and his goons have already hijacked the helicopter and forced the pilot to send a distress message framing Mike and Marcus for the attack before McGrath slits his throat. McGrath escapes with some of his guys and leaves the chopper to go down. Mike and Marcus fight the remaining guys while trying to save Armando from flying out of the open hatchback. After they free him, Armando helps them make a crash landing into a lake. Authorities survey the crash site and receive the distress message. So Mike, Marcus, and Armando are all labeled wanted fugitives, while McGrath puts out a large bounty on their heads to every gangster in Miami. Mike and Marcus follow Armando with how to be on the run, which Marcus sees as a good opportunity for Mike to bond with his son, but neither is interested in connecting and just wants to get their names cleared. They come upon a trailer park and try to swipe clothes from some rednecks, but they are discovered and held at gunpoint before Armando hotwires a truck and gets them out of there. After driving back into Miami, the truck breaks down. 
Mike calls a contact named Tabitha, Tiffany Haddish, and agrees to meet at her club in exchange for guns, clothes, and a vehicle. When they get there, Tabitha pretends to help them but is only stalling to get other gangsters in there to bring the three out for the bounty. Just as they are taken outside, rival gangsters come to shoot the captor gangsters, including Manny the Butcher, DJ Khaled, who wants to get back at Mike for smashing his hand with a meat hammer. Manny's ambitions are short-lived as the guys board a van and crush Manny into another car, and he then gets hit with a Molotov cocktail. The three drive away and shoot at the incoming gangsters, but Judy also pursues and tries to fire at Armando. The three then jump from the van as the engine catches fire and explodes. Mike, Marcus, and Armando make their way to Dorn's place, where they find that he is in a secret relationship with Kelly. While they are none too happy about helping Armando, they agree to help Mike and Marcus go through tons of evidence so that Armando can identify McGrath. They eventually manage to get somewhere after finding him on surveillance footage. Dorn digs up McGrath's history, learning that he and his team were taken hostage by the cartel, and he gave them up after being tortured, leaving him as the only survivor. Mike contacts Rita and tells her about McGrath. Moments later, the guys see through Dorn's security cameras in both their houses that McGrath has sent guys to get Christine as well as Marcus's family. While Mike tries to contact Christine, Marcus gets in touch with Reggie and warns him about the incoming threat. Reggie gets Teresa, Megan, and little Marcus somewhere hidden while he grabs his gun and puts his combat-slash-firearm skills to good use, taking out 15 goons and keeping the family safe, and finally earning Marcus's respect. Meanwhile, Christine is visited by Callie, who wanted to offer help in proving Mike and Marcus's innocence, but McGrath's goons have already made their way inside. McGrath contacts Mike and lets him know that he will return Christine and Callie unharmed if he gives up Armando and all of Howard's evidence. Armando is willing to turn himself in, but Mike has another idea since he knows who has been feeding McGrath information on all of their whereabouts. Mike calls Rita again while she is with Lockwood to tip her off. She tells him she is going to the station, and he insists on going with her. As they go down the elevator, Rita confirms that Lockwood is working with McGrath. Lockwood attempts to kill her, but Kelly and Dorn arrive just in time and take him down. They get Lockwood to talk long enough and give up his motive, profiting from cartel association, to scan his voice and have Mike set up a call posing as Lockwood to McGrath to meet up. Mike tells Marcus, Armando, Rita, Kelly, and Dorn that they are the only ones that each other can trust right now.